Right, so uh, me and Ralph uh, are in the camper van. We we? are, yeah. Uh, Today, and we've been driving round, just going seeing people, and we're driving through um, near a friend of ours' house. Yeah. And we thought, we'll phone her and see if she wants to come out and have a chat. What are you laughing at? Go on. What are you laughing at? No, go on. I mean, that sounded so really convincing. Go on. Well, it's true. So we're here in a pub car park with Kate Thornton. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God I was home, eh? Thank God I was in. Last hour and a half. So grumpy. I'm not grumpy. (laughs) Tell everybody. I had to drive this fucking camper van for two hours across London. (laughs) That's because you don't live in London. You have to come into London. I just live just outside. Kate lives just about in London, but right in the arse end of it. And uh, (laughs) that's a nice (laughs) thing to say about where Kate lives. No, Kate lives in. in I'm 12 minutes from Victoria. Kate lives. uh, Let's not give her a dress away, you know. Which is is beautiful. Dulwich is quite quite a big place. Kate lives in Dulwich, which is beautiful, but normally we record our podcast in Queen's Park, sort of West London. Yeah. Will lives out west, I live out west. And for some reason, it was decided, and Will and I never really argued it out, that we would drive the camper van, or Will would drive the camper van all the way to Dodge, which took him two and a bit hours. Yeah. He was so <laughs> grumpy when he got here, right? And then we'd set up the thing to interview Kate here in, in the camper van. But Kate's house, which is there, it's about... <laughs> 15 seconds away, has an actual podcast studio in it. So why didn't we just do it in there? I because, hey, so, we're, bang on, we're bang on trend now. We're, we're, we're on the, brand. We're, we're on brand. We're going yeah. around the country in our camper well, van. It's nice to have a lady in the back of the van, isn't it? It is. It's been a while. <laughs> what, yeah. It's been a while. Like, I've, it's I've been, been a while sat around to... listening to your chat for the last <laughs> half hour. I'm not surprised. Ra- it's rancid, isn't it? Can you believe that I'm anyone actually pays to listen to this? Um, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, so. no, we oh go anyway. Sorry, sorry, it's my phone. It's the oh, sorry, it's the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah, cheers, darling. As uh, cheers. Al Murray would say, if wine or fruit based drink for the lady. Oh, Kate's <laughs> obviously on the wine because you do white wine question time. I do, but you're oh, on red wine today. I know because that's what you guys have served me. Oh, there you go. I'm then. not, no. not going to be rude. Oh, did you want white wine? No. Okay. No, listen, anything, anything well, from the grape is fine with me. Right. Welcome, cheers, welcome boys. To Three pints with Will and Ralph. Thanks for coming to Seals, having a chat. I I love your podcast. Thank Thanks. you very much. It's, it says the unsayables. The stuff that I could never dare to dream oh, to, to that, think or say on my own me. podcast. That worries Today, me. you are free to say whatever you want. That worries me. Yeah, please do say whatever you want. Let we have a very go. judicious editor who basically, whose <laughs> job it is to keep our careers from torching <laughs> up in flames. And it's always it's, it's not always an editor, border. he's an yeah. anti-cancel <laughs> officer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what can- he does. Keeps an- us in work. Anti-cancel officer. Keeps us on air. So come on, how how are, like, how are you? I mean, we, right. we, did our, we did our little collaboration, didn't that we? That was great. Clown, which was great. We were supposed to talk for about 15 minutes then ended up doing two hours two hours which was good it was I great it, yeah it's just do you know what I'm, I'm really good yeah no real complaints um but i can find some if you want yeah you know well, that will that's your third line of complaint. patter well, I, I, yeah. a moment well, he yeah. a complaint. your Try podcast not. is absolutely flying though thanks uh it's like isn't it nice to be able to I mean, we found this with with this like you know but it's, we still obviously our, our careers our jobs like we want to get work obviously i've been lucky enough to do death of paradise the last couple of years we had a great stint in Corrie recently but yeah. what a, what a world we now live in where you go instead of like desperately hoping that someone's going to employ you and going if they don't what am i going to do you can just set up set up shop start recording if people like it, they'll come, and if they don't, they won't. N- yeah, they won't. Exactly. But you're not relying. There's no middleman. You're not relying no. on anyone to make it's this happen. A, it's a bit like what's about to happen to banks has happened in broadcasting. Yeah, like there's no need for that middleman if you've yeah. got the the appetite to get out there and do it yourself. And you know, I think for me, when I started White Wine Question Time, I thought what would be my dream gig, mm-hmm. and it would be a weekly chat show, but without the pressure yeah. of overnights and ratings yeah. and yeah. do I look all right and. Yeah. Does what the new person that's just been brought into the network like me or am I about yeah. to be fired? Oh, there I go again. I'm fired again. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's all of that stuff, which is just like part and parcel yeah. of our business. That's the, the way the tides rush in and out. But actually, with technology now, yeah. as long as you're up for it, you can build your own audience. And that's kind of, I guess, what you guys have done. Yeah. That's exactly what you guys are doing with this and what I've done with mine. And I love it. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I, do, I do 52 shows a year. And wow, it's a lot. I've, One a I've, week. Yeah. Is it not a pressure hey, for that, though? Your maths is surprising. See how quick it was, though. Well, fuck, that's... Can I afford one's going, fuck all on me. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Go on. <laughs> so one a week, 52 a year. Well done, Will. Yeah. Let's see. Good. Yeah, that's a lot. lot. That's <laughs> a lot. But I love it. I absolutely love it. So it's like I've written my dream ticket. Yeah. And when you look at it like that, that, I mean, I like... Can you imagine when we first met in the 90s? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, it, that this this world would even exist. And this yeah. is what... Like, last night I was um, doing Parents' Evening with my son. 
and he's doing his GCSE options. And they're asking, you know, they ask all the kids, like, what do you think you want to do when you leave school? The chances are, by the time you leave school, there'll be jobs available to him that haven't even so been invented yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, to kids learn coding at school now, is oh, that yeah, right? computer science, well, coding. My son's girlfriend uh, does coding, so that's what she does. Mm. Uh, 18. Amazing. I haven't got a clue. I know I, spell I know the word coding, but other than that, I couldn't define it. I don't know what it is. Something with computers, that's it. Not I have not what a is clue. the creation of, I suppose, when you're <clears> writing <throat> algorithms and stuff, you know, this, this is the stuff they can do themselves. They can yeah. build their own websites. Insane. It's amazing. So actually, when you think... I know this is like probably really boring for you guys, but when you think about like the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. yeah, so how that changed everything, for, yeah, cars, absolutely. washing machines, hoovers. I mean, all, I mean, like from from the very big yeah. to the domestic appliances that changed the way um, we operate. When you compare the acceleration of that to the digital revolution, exactly. it is mind-blowing yeah. how quickly we're moving in comparison. Not only is that bore is that not boring, but I I. I feel had, like Kate I, Humble, by the way. No, now. no, you're I feel absolutely like I'm having quite right. an intelligent I remember, I, remember I, 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 I had the every same. Subject's open. I had the same conversation um, in like the early noughties. I remember having the same conversation about in the early noughties about the digital revolution and going. Now that you think about, like it was CDs, but now you've got. Remember uh, what were they called? Mike, were they micro discs? What were they called? Mini mini, mini discs. Discs. Yeah, mini I was like, discs. you had you a mini mi disc player. Yeah, oh yeah, I had a mini disc player. But like, you get mini discs, and 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 uh, then there's these uh, MP3 players. And I always remember saying, oh, if you think about how much data can be stored, like this revolution, it doesn't seem like it because yeah. it doesn't seem as transformative. But I reckon this digital revolution is as big as the industrial revolution. Oh, bigger. And then what? Four years later, the iPhone came out, and the whole world changed, apps and everything. And but yeah, we're living right in the middle of a, a very critical time we really are, and actually it's reached that kind of sort of slightly dangerous tipping point where a lot of the brilliant technology that's been brought about is being used for not such a greater good well, so data needs, harvesting well, and all that yeah, kind of thing we fight wars digitally now Correct, we campaign yeah. elections digitally and proper, yeah propaganda has never been more uh, effective than it is prevalent and so and so easy yeah exactly and and too much power sits in the hands of too few yeah and these are all problems that we faced historically and it's up to our generation to kind of iron it out and also prep our kids to go out there and I, deal I, with I it too i fear that our kids are going to be the ones if anyone saves us it's going to have to be them because i think we're too naive as a generation i think we're too naive and too stuck in i'm like oh these are fun toys and I think our kids are like growing I say our kids I haven't got any but I think the next generation is mm. hopefully going to be the one that's like a bit more savvy but throughout history everyone's hoped that <laughs> and it's exactly. never quite worked out but it's, it's also just a way of sort of like just parking the problems yeah exactly they'll deal there. with it thanks kids <laughs> yeah there's a lot of people are going back though aren't they to you know like technology's gone that far now that sometimes it goes too far and they start going back so like vinyls coming back in and all that sort of stuff and people so are sort of going I went out the other night and I forgot my phone, right? And I, and I was like, <gasps> I forgot my phone. And missing... Panic. Yeah, but then I thought, well, I'll, I'll leave it because we're going for dinner. Don't need it. And it was great. I actually looked around the restaurant a bit. <laughs> do you know if Michelle goes to the toilet or something? Instantly, you're on your Go phone. On your phone, yeah. Instantly. And I couldn't do it. And it, I don't know, it was just sort of, you took yeah. in more and it's... It's I a crack. It's, it's yeah. a crack pipe. Yeah, yeah. It is a crack yeah. pipe. You can't put. <laughs> we you, can't you, put it down. You put it down. You go. I'll leave it there. And you go. I'll pick it back we up. We sleep next to it. It holds our life. Our, you know, everything that you could download from your phone will tell you more about you than you could probably yeah, I hope no tell one about has, yourself. I hope no one ever downloads a phone. <laughs> There's a lot of shit on there that I wouldn't want people to see. <laughs> delete your history. Oh yeah. Oh, search history gets deleted <laughs> very <laughs> regularly. That's, what's the last thing you do at night? Delete your search history. Obviously. Oh, obviously. Do you? <laughs> Oh, you've got you it, not? No, never. Oh, wow. Because wow. I've got nothing to hide. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's no. a load of bullshit. Yeah, bollocks. I mean, really, all you're clearing <laughs> is porn, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is that what you call yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. well, just own it. I mean, no, no you biggie. Own. No, if, you, if you're searching for porn, don't be afraid of somebody else discovering it. It's perfectly healthy. Yeah, it depends what porn you're searching well, for. Some of, the shit that, <laughs> some of the shit that Will goes looking up is... Uh, hey, don't not, bring me into it. <laughs> it's not, so, Will's like, how do you spell donkey again? As you don't oh. leave it. Leave it. See, see, you thought it was me, and now he's piped up. <laughs> it's the places, though, now, because I was thinking there must be places where you go, like a pub or a bar or a restaurant, where there's no phone, so you put your phone in a box or something when you go in the reception. I think they're called swingers clubs. <laughs> yeah, Will knows that's, that. That's fucking car keys. That's <laughs> house, house keys. Whose house keys are these? Yeah. Me and you, Joan. Well, no, is, there must be bars out there. Do you know, like where it's I know like you, a Wi-Fi free zone? No, just somewhere where you put your phone in, and then if it, if you know, if and reception contacts you, if the, if there's something, I'm just thinking it'd be a, a celebrity more, wedding for okay. It'd be a bit, yeah, of course, it'd be a bit yeah. more liberty, well, you know, it's an it? interesting idea, isn't it? But the only time I've ever been asked to leave my phone behind and had no problem with it was um, uh, Secret Cinema. 
That was well worth it. Yeah, I did. Have the, you done uh, that? No, I did uh, something similar. Um, similar. The Drowning similar. Man, um, oh. which is the um, gosh, what's his name? He's amazing. Immersive theatre. So you go into this. Uh, it was a disused warehouse in Paddington. Right. Paddington, yeah. And you leave your phones at the door, and then it's an entirely immersive experience, I'd love that. Where, which is improvised, and you become part of the play. I'd love and that. they terrify the life out of you. It's amazing. Yeah. It was I'd really good that. fun. Is it still on now? No, no, it's not. I, mean, I love that the drowning man's but... described as immersive theatre as well. She's no, I think in, I, I, in, I might have got that wrong. Well, it's, it's just it's a good word for it, just since he's immersed in it, water. Then, um, so I, I was working with him briefly, look. and then he went over to. So I, I knew of this. I took him to this island in Essex that where that I love to go to called OC Island. I don't know if you know about OC Island. No, it's beautiful Essex. Um, it's a beautiful island just off the. the well, it's on the coast of Malden, and you cross it by a causeway, and it's where um, oh my Punch God. Drunk, the Drowned Man. Punch of Monk. course, Punch Drunk is fantastic. Right, so this yeah. the guy that runs Punch Drunk. He then I said, look, you know, he, he was looking for a really unique location. I was like, you've got to come to OC. It's amazing because they'd filmed a very famous film there on the causeway. Anyway, he went over there in lockdown and shot the Jude Law uh, improv drama that yes, went out on Sky. Yes, yes, yeah. So his it was all that kind of thinking. So I was quite happy to sacrifice my fame for that. Okay. It was really good that fun. That seems reasonable. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was really good fun, actually. But like, I just worry that, you know, I, I would really be happier if, if people... Check this out as a bit of data then. I saw this the other day online. Oh, the fucking irony. Um, but it said, in terms of distractions, so our ability to concentrate, if, say, so say you sit down to, for example, write something. So mm -hmm. say you were about to write a script imagine um, you sit down to write if you've got your notifications on the distraction uh so emails phone calls whatever the distractions mean that your iq drops 10 percent, which is the equivalent of trying to carry that task I out having smoked two joints <laughs> yeah. having smoked two joints so if you switch your notifications off and and so even if you sat down and switched your notifications off, smoked a spliff, attempted the same task, but just had the one, you'd still be more you'd effective still be off. Yeah. than really? having your yeah. notifications on. Wow. Now, whether or not it's true, I don't know. I saw it on Instagram. Um, no, however, yeah. it, it did make true. me think. It did make me think. Yeah. Talk about writing. Um, this is a segue into what I wanted to talk to you about. Is um, that you... you Started out as a writer. Is I that did. right for Smash Hits, was it? So I was the. Did you Smash Hits back in the day? Yeah, well, I, I, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I was the editor of Smash Hits when I was 21. Unbelievable. 21? <laughs> now, plenty of people. I guess. 21? I, I, I'm try, I know. I'm trying to work out, like, our audience. I don't even know how old our audience are, but yeah, I'd expect that they're. I don't think they'd know what Smash Hits is. Well, I think they're. My son doesn't know who Kylie is. You're I mean, that's. But I'm not that's necessarily. I'm not necessarily sure our audience is, like, they're probably by and large our age, you would think, right? Probably. So, so she they would, so they would probably. know Smash Hits, and they'd obviously remember well, like all your TV. Pr 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 but for, um, for people of our generation, yeah. Smash Hits was like it was the, the one, right? The music the bible yeah, for pop yeah. music. But it is funny. All the years I sort of I've, have known you and sort of bumped into you over the years and whatever, I've always thought I've always known you as um, Kate Thornton presenter, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no idea that you that your career started so kind of auspiciously at 21 years old mm, editing was... Smash How the hell does a 21 year old yeah. end up editing Smash Hits kind of out of nowhere or was it not out of nowhere? No, no, listen, you know, me getting that job should never have happened because I'd been out of journalism school like 18 months. I'd got a job straight Where out. Where did you study? So I studied at the London College of Printing, which I think is known as the London Institute now. So, so what? So you did A levels? Yeah. Somewhere where where were you? Where did you Cheltenham go? in Gloucestershire is Chel where I'm from. Are you? Mm. My sister lived in Cheltenham for about three years. Is um, she? What's that, what's that fancy area? Montpellier. Montpellier is oh, beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. In Montpellier. yeah, I didn't live That's there. Not a euphemism, <laughs> um, I had a steak bake there. Because <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> you did. <laughs> Uh, so Cheltenham, so you did your A levels, then you went to the London. I Institute. applied. I applied Cheltenham everywhere London. to study journalism, um, and by this point, I'd already, I'd already got a job on my local free sheet. Do you remember free sheets? Yeah. No. Nope. It's be thrown through your your letterbox, like the local newspaper that was free that you didn't pay. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I got a job on that uh, on my lo one of my local free sheets, paying the paper boys because I knew I didn't really have the grades to make journalism college. I'm not academically bright at all. Or certainly my my grades would not suggest that I was. Um, but I knew I wanted to be a journalist. So I got a job on the local pay, uh, paper, but my job was to pay the paper boys. 
and I had to put cash in brown envelopes and leave it out for them every week. And I was there, I, I think I probably did about six hours a week. But they let me write the odd thing, which meant that when I applied to journalism schools, oh, I had I had a byline. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I just yeah. and I took my pay slips in. Wow. I said I was part time. I didn't tell them that I was paying the paper boys. Ah, that's great, <laughs> wow. though. So you're a bit of a, you've always been. A I was bit a hustler. hustler though, yeah. You? yeah, yeah. Because I was, only because like, I think sometimes necessity is the mother of invention. And there was, I didn't know it. Like growing up, I didn't know anyone who had a career. Mm. Like people had jobs. We're from a very well. I'm proudly working class. Yeah. But I I had sort of spied through reading lots and lots of books that there was this other thing out there mm -hmm. like a profession yeah. so the only professionals we knew growing up were like teachers or yeah. doctors or dentists you know yeah. um and you know i am of that generation we are of that generation where yeah. we're kind of like the first kids from working class backgrounds to have access to further education you know i mean my dad was told at school that he was factory fodder I mean, yeah. and that that's that's in our lifetimes, you know, yeah. where, where kids were not encouraged to, to dream big or have more. And no, I certainly wasn't. Yeah. My, my, Me my too. Mom was, I was my exactly mom was the same. same. My mum was the first out of her family for generations, first first ever to go to university. Yeah. Same, same. And I didn't and, do uni, but I did do journalism yeah. school. And so I applied everywhere. There's and her parents had to, like, so my grandparents had to, like, do three jobs each to, yeah. to put her through to school. To put it, it's like 100%. Yeah. And I couldn't do uni because I couldn't really afford it. And I didn't mm. want to put that strain on my parents. Yeah. Who despite you know my school my school my the teachers at my school when you know when i told them that i wanted to be a writer i was advised to lower lower my expectations yeah. and think about a job in a typing pool. can you believe that yeah seriously yeah i mean you say that now and, and it makes me it still makes me angry so i you know yeah but that do you know what it's same happened with me i don't want to go on about what happened to me because it's about you same shit happened with me they told me to just sit at the back of the class with headphones on don't talk to people don't yeah. just because i was a lively person and, uh, and i could i and and I would never do what I wanted to say because you know I went to the you know the careers officer. Yeah. What do you want to do? I said I want to be an actor. I want to perform. I want to be on stage. And they said, No. What do you really want to do? Yeah. So they put me down as a mechanic. Fucking mechanic. I was never interested. In know, I had to play, go and do my work experience in a garage. Then you played gas and covered both. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? There was no. It was like. Uh, well, lower awful. your expectations. Yeah. You live it, in a county. You're, you're from a working class well, area. You don't do that. It's, it's know, a load it's, of shit, man. Yeah, it was, and it was because we, I, you know, I was at a school that was predominantly attended by kids who were from very working class backgrounds. Aspiration just wasn't even a word that we were no. taught or understood. True. And what was lovely is the school that my son goes to now. When we went to look around it, they they assigned a sixth former to show us around, and this great kid. I'm pretty sure his name was Anil. He was showing us around and he's like, and I leave soon, you know, I'm off, I'm going to uni. And I was like, oh, so what are you doing? And he's like, I I'm, I'm studying to become an astronaut. And I was wow. like, wow. And he was wow. like, yeah. My God. Uh, you know, he's, you know, he had it all worked out and had had nothing but encouragement from his teachers yeah, to encourage him to do world, that. Yeah. So, you know, every time I see a story about space travel now, I'm looking out Checking for him. Oh. Scenario, because, yeah. and I just thought, Wow, and I think I would have been a different Dream person, person if somebody had endorsed my ambition. Mm -hmm. Do you think it fed you a bit though when people say you can't do it? Make you go, I'll show you. Yeah, but I think I could have been, I, I could have done it in a more product. I could have achieved the same, but without it being in spite of you I know. Understand, yeah. And yeah. you know, like I became a journalist and I couldn't spell because I really hadn't had a great education but um but anyway long story short yeah. I, I applied to journalism school i had to do some work placements i got a work on a national newspaper realized very quickly that the kind of culture there wasn't for me but that you know i was up and running i had a byline and i was given a column very early on um it was for the mirror um to write an entertainment column like an interview a competition a record review like nothing crazy yeah. Because I mean, I was an editorial assistant on ten grand yeah, a year. That's good fun, though, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. But they were going, oh, all the readers are dying, and their children are not taking the paper. Like, mm. so that was a big problem. I was raised on the Mirror, yeah. um, and they were like, so we need younger readers. We need we need something to bring them in. And I literally was the only young person in the room at this meeting on the staff. And so I, I mean, just put my hand up and I said, I'll do it. And you don't have to pay me. Nice. Right. And that's awesome. that. You're that gave me the byline. That made yeah. my application for the editor's chair at Smash Hits um, kind of go to the top of the pile, I guess. Wow. And then I always really believe that once you can get through the door, it's down to you to land yeah, it. Yeah. And I didn't know what I mean. Literally, this is how embarrassingly crap and naive I was. They said, show us what you do with the magazine. I went home and made a magazine and stapled it together and drew a barcode on the back. 
and everything. Did you? Tell you what, though, I bet it went a million miles. Though. I bet everyone was like, this is amazing. Mm. Rather than go, well, I've got some ideas. I could do this. I could and do that. And you go, this is what I'll I do. literally just showed them you know, page by page what I'd put on there. I marked out the ads. Um, and how long, was you, amazing, how long was you out to smash it? It's Not fine. long, because then I went to telly. And this is that, you know. So you didn't do any of this, this do you know, like, obviously, you must have met. Did you meet people, a, interview people, as much as pop stars so, and stuff well, like that? Did that was the year of the Spice you? Girls. Did what? You ever no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let her tell the story. No, she didn't. Right. No, what year were you? What, don't, no, you. I can't remember. I was, well, I was. Uh, yeah, you can. Hollyoaks, I can't remember, because we did all that for Hollyoaks, because we was this new teen sort. No, no, we? but what year were you? Did was your pop career? I yeah. can't remember. I was 20. When was your Leo Sayer cover? Fucking hell. 22, 23, I was. I suppose. So, so what year would that I'm for, be? I'm 45 now, so so what year would that be? Uh, that, that was my year. So, but yeah, but 96. Please, did you please? I'll have to have a look through the loft. She doesn't remember interviewing me. I wouldn't have interviewed you because I was the editor. So anyway, yeah, it was your time. It was your era. So yeah. 96, I joined, um, and and I loved it. Uh, I had the most incredible time at Smash It. And it was the year of girl power and mm. take that splitting up and yes. Jarvis flashing Jacko at the bricks. Oh, yeah. Wow. There was a lot going yeah. on. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that was a bad time, though, wasn't it? I mean, the 90s, is, the music in the 90s, what was good about it was it was a summer for everybody. There was pop music, there was mm. rock, you had Brit pop. You had something for everybody. You had romantic. You had the new romantic. You had all sorts. You know, the of new romantic was the eighties. Yeah, eighties punk new and new romantic. Is 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 music a bit more homogenous now, or are we just old? I mean, does every generation say that? Oh, yeah. music's not the same now as it used to be. I think we're just old. I think that we probably don't access the wide variety of music yeah, that's yeah. coming through because we're not in the places that it's distributed. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember the you last know, time like I used to listen to, to Radio to 1. We used to go to our price. Yeah. No, there yeah. was this brilliant... Was I, nice I, hired, I hired a brilliant writer at Smash It's. This guy was incredible, right? It's, I love this story. So our price... So my offices were just off Oxford Street. Nice. Uh, in a place called Mapping House, right? I remember it. Do you? Yeah. 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 EMAP. Yeah. And up the road, there was the massive flagship R Price store on Oxford Street. And on a Monday, this lad used to leave at reception for me his reviews of that week's singles. Right? And he worked at R Price. He, he was literally stacking the shelves, listening to them, and he'd write these reviews. Wow. And I thought he was hilarious. He was funny, pithy, acerbic. Uh, yeah, I just loved him. So in the end, I said to the receptionist, "Next time he comes in, can you can you keep him here? I'd love to, I'd love to meet him." To, to find, whatever I thought he was going to be, he wasn't that. He and I loved him straight away. And I hired him, and he was so unassuming, and he was so tall and kind of you know he would sort of stoop over, and he was very quiet, and people forgot he was there. And then he'd so, oh, bless so I'd send him off on tour with Boyzone for two weeks, and he'd come back and write these brilliant color pieces, and he's now. He's the culture editor at The Guardian, Alex. Oh, Neal. is he really? Yeah. Wow. Isn't that great? That's great. Yeah, That's that great. is cool. Yeah, and great he was amazing. Story. He was always going to do well. Yeah. But the fact that he kind of grabbed my attention in the way that he did mm -hmm. Obviously, our fantastic. talent then, and you just mm. noticed it. Yeah. How was the bridge into TV then? Because you, you, cause you being behind the camera, being a writer uh, and Oh, I was doing so that, reluctant, Will. Did you really? want to get in front oh. of the camera? Well, what had happened is when I took on Smash Hits, the sales were in decline, right? And literally within weeks of joining, take that split up. So that wasn't great news for Carl Oh, yeah, I yeah. remember that, yeah. Wow. But part of my job was to be a spokesperson for the magazine to raise its profile. And it was a huge year for pop music. So forever, I was getting a call from our press office at work saying, can you do news at 10? Oh, um, you know, the nine o'clock news want to talk to you about Jarvis or whatever, whatever it was, right? Um, so I spent a lot of time doing stuff on camera, I suppose. And then I started to get offered TV shows because I was, you know, I was this bright, shiny new thing. I was mm -hmm. the youngest ever editor of the magazine. I was the first woman ever to edit it. You know, there was, there was a, I was yeah, a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good story. It's a good story. It is a good story. And um, so I said no to a lot of this stuff because I was doing the job that I loved. And then this woman got in touch with me and she offered me, well, she asked me if I'd be interested in hosting a current affairs show for ITV on Sunday lunchtimes. And I said, no, thanks. And she was like that. She just wouldn't let it lie. She was persistent and brilliant. And in the end, I agreed to go for a coffee with her. And she basically pitched the business case to me, which was you're in a declining industry. Your newspaper sales are tanking. Magazine sales are tanking. You've been sent into smash hits to manage decline. Mm -hmm. She was right. And then she said, there's five TV stations and Channel 5 had just launched. She went, but there's hundreds coming over the hill. 
there's a digital revolution, mm-hmm. right? And she pitched really? me the future. Yeah. And she said, if you don't ride this wave now, where will you be? Mm-hmm. You know? And I said, but I don't want to be famous. I've worked with famous people. It's horrific. Yeah, it's nightmare. awful. Really? I really, was, I know. Really I knew, and I thought it was just a, a, a fast food, fast turnaround, burnout career. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want that. I wanted a long and illustrious when you're hot, career. You're not, you're not, you're not gone. Totally right. Yeah, yeah, and totally, that's yeah. very it much. It's not like that, though. But it's still like that. You're lucky if you ride that wave mm. and keep going. So, and I just thought, and I'm an editor. You know, like, why would I leave this job? Are you insane? And anyway, she just. She got me thinking to the point that she kept me awake at night with her. Mm. With, it was basically, I was crunching the data that she yeah, put in yeah, my head. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I don't, at the same time, I'd made contact with um, the Sunday Times and they'd asked me, they'd said to me that they would like me to go over as a contributing editor. Mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, like for a girl that couldn't spell three years previous, yeah. I was like, And you'd have Shut been up. 24, 5 at this point. 22. 20, oh, still. 23. Oh, my Lord. 23. Wow. All this happened in two years. Wow. Literally two years. Like, nuts. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, do I jump ship? Do I go to the Sunday Times, do this television program? What? Where she sold me on the pro TV program was she said, you've got to present it, and it's live in studio. It's But it's going to be, A, it's against EastEnders Omnibus. Nobody's going to watch it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> and, B, you've got to produce yourself. You've got to produce your items, book your, your guests. So what? this is a crash course in telly. And I'd sort of said, I think I want to be a producer. If I do anything in telly, I'd like to produce. And yeah. she's like, well, then try a bit of everything. Yeah. No one's going to see. No one's going to get hurt, you know. And it was. It ended up being me. So it was four new faces for ITV Current Affairs. Me, Nick Knowles. Right. Nick Knowles. <laughs> was his oh, first he, network gig. Mate, he was presenting when the dinosaurs were kicking about. <laughs> and with, he's with been, me. He's been, yeah, but he, he'll have done 50 years before he did this with you. <laughs> He's that lad has never it's never stopped working. He's always popped up on something. So so we did that show ninety seven. Like that, you know, it's nearly you know, it's it's twenty five years that I've been d- doing the on screen stuff now. Mm-hmm. And actually once I did it, well, I just got the bug. We ended up on air the day Diana died and they kept us on air. Jesus. Wow. And after that hour of being part of you know, the biggest story of modern time. Hundred percent. Everyone knows where they were that day. Yeah. Everybody. And I drove home from Southampton, because our show was broadcast from Southampton at Meridian Television. And I drove home in absolute silence. And I just, I remember that that drive now. I remember the car I was driving. I can remember how it smelled. I remember chain smoked the whole way back. I used to smoke back then. And I just thought, I I, I, I don't think I can ever do anything else. Live television. Like that. really? That. And and it felt awful for thinking that because it had been at the expense of reporting, you know, the loss of, you know, but you, mom, but, you know, but, but, that but 23 you, yeah, years old. And you'd have had to be like that day, you'd be like, okay, well, it's all, this is my first day. Adrenaline's absolutely kicking. That's quite a high. I was terrified. And the night before, so Nick and I had been moved to Southampton to be near the studios. And so, but we were both living in a Novotel, right? And he was in the next room to me, and I could always hear him on his guitar. Thank God you said guitar. I'm glad you said guitar. I could always hear him strum, <laughs> strumming his one string banjo. <laughs> I could always hear him strumming away. Bashing one out. Bling, 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 bling. Oh, wonderful. Have a guess what song you think. Bear in he mind. brought some music out not long ago. Oh, yeah, he brought an album out, I think, for Christmas or yeah. something, didn't he? Um, have a guess what song. What was the song that any Wonder man... Wall. Nope. Oh. No, that was that was only just released in 97. Okay. So, right. so yeah. What was Stairway he singing? to Heaven? No. Bashing a, bashing a song out on a guitar? Through, his, through the hotel room walls. Oh. Oh. Was Ext- it a nineties song? Extreme, more than words. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> more than no. words. Oh, and I've just no. been sat there going, "Fuck." Again. Yeah, so yeah, then, I, so I what I did is I couldn't sleep one night, and I'd left. I used to love that song. I'd left BBC Overnight News on, just rolling. So I, while I was trying to sleep, and that's when the early reports came in that there'd been an accident mm. in Paris, and Dodi Fayed was dead, and Diana was critically ill, and then I bang the wall. Yeah. And shut the, up! <laughs> shut it's up. like, no. I was like, I was like, come in. And then we just sat and watched that. I so, said, yeah, it was, it was, it was. Imagine. Nick, come in. He turned up in his underpants and his guitar. Like, exactly. Like, you are. He's, you know, no, no, no. What's this it was, no, no, it wasn't far off that one. No, Nick's, was walked, it? Nick's walked in, he's gone, finally. Finally. I, 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 knew, I knew if I played it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> but he had you nothing on. Just his, just his guitar. No. Is this a, is this a scoop? Did you. you and Nick Knowles ever hook up? Never. Oh. No, he was married. Somebody just laughed at me. Well, laughing at he's, he's a good looking man, Nick Knowles. I know, but she was like 21 at the time and yeah. he was probably about 62. <laughs> <laughs> and that, was, so and that, was, that was 25 years ago. Sadly, yeah. I think Nick and I are not dissimilar in age. 
Really? Yeah. It does a lot of outdoor work, Ralph. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, so that was it. So then I was in that. That was it. Then I was like, right. But then, like you know, when you look at how life can be, like it's like a domino effect, isn't it? Yeah. So from that, so I went off and did that show, and as well as covering, you know, stories like Diana, I mean, I'd have to go off and and create stories every week mm-hmm. and and book a studio guest to come in. And one of the shows that I did uh, meant that I had to go to Top of the Pops and interview the boss of Top of the Pops, mm-hmm. and he remembered me. Chris and Cowie? Chris Cowie. Mm. He used well, to literally that. live there. He was one really? of my neighbours. No yeah. way. Really? And he phoned me. And I, I mean, I didn't even know that I'd made an impression. Mm-hmm. And uh, and said, can you be at Elstree in two hours time? Jane Middlemas has gone off sick. And if you can be Jane here. Jane Middlemas, remember Jane Middle? Do you know what? When you look back at those times, weren't we lucky? Oh, yeah. Do you know what? Great I mean, times. And there were only even, five even channels. the shit bits. There were only five channels and I, we were working on them. All yeah. the time. I can't believe it. Yeah. Do you know, I remember saying to my agent, like, so what's, what's a good number of shows to have? And he was like, well, you need four. And I, so I always tried Jesus. to keep four shows going. Yeah. I like the idea of doing that now. But, do you know, after, one of the best jobs I got after that, so I did Top of the Pops. Yeah. Super lucky. Love that. Then got a Saturday night show called Don't Try This at Home. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. What yeah. was that? I do yeah. remember the, what yeah. is that. Yeah. It was where you Remind do, me. You, you challenge members of the public to do some terrifying stunt, and if they didn't, you had to do it. I oh. remember like... They should bring that back. That would work. Surely that would work now. I spent a night at the London Aquarium trying to convince a vicar covered in steak to swim with sharks so I didn't have to. <laughs> really? <laughs> and really? Did, and did you have to swim with the sharks covered said, in steak? I, said, I told him God was with him. And did, yeah. he, and did he go? <laughs> yeah. Really, you pulled the God card out. Yeah. Please tell me you're an atheist. That would be even darker. Yes, Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Play his own game. Yeah, yeah. Just trick him. Trick him with whatever fairy stories. Don't worry, he's still with you. Keep swimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. God will protect you. Wow. That was a time when, you know, there was a lot of stuff like that, wasn't there? Like the words yeah. and stuff. You'd and... have all that stuff. But then the BBC, Christ knows why they decided me, but they offered me travel shows. So I spent four, four years... Literally every other week, I was on a plane somewhere. Wow, sounds like and a nightmare. Like, oh, I'm mean, like when you think now, I'm like, oh my. I know. I basically, I was a competition winner you... that was paid. Yeah, was yeah. You, did you did you give yourself time to enjoy that? Totally. And to this day, I will say with my hand on my heart, of all the things I've done, that was the greatest job in the world. Yeah, really. You say you were you were reluctant, right, to do all to to go in front of the camera. I was um, reluctant to leave my job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you wasn't scared Fa- about... I was scared about being on camera. And also, fame. You were a bit worried well, about Well, that's why I got to ask. So fame, like... Mm. Well, I didn't... There's no... It's, 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 I suspect it's a complicated answer, but broadly speaking, did you enjoy it? Like, you look back now, was being famous fun? Was it more trouble than it was worth? It's a lot... Um, people are lovely. Mm. The profile and the media attention I struggled with. Mm. Um, a lot. I just, do you know what? You just have to remember that it's not normal that everyone knows who you are. Yeah. That's not normal. Yeah, but it never gets normal. You know, you never, you, it never ever, even though you so get you shouldn't, used to it. I just it. don't think you should be okay with it and you should always question yourself around it. I think as a woman as well, particularly, it's not something that we've ever had to contend with, but there was a, there used to be a section in Heat called like, oh, yes. oh like, so, I can't Is remember what it was called. did that? No, Boyd Hilton was always Boyd was just a was just a TV reviewer. Like, oh yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But there was a section he called something like "Shame of the Week" or sh- "Circle of Shame." Circle of Shame. Yeah, yeah, how was that? And it was a, and it was like looking at you know paparazzi shot of women in bikinis on holiday in summer and, and going, "Oh look, look she has armpits. How mm-hmm. disgusting!" Like it was really really weird. Yeah, well, but like guys course. were never in it. Well, yeah, no, yeah, they yeah. weren't. Um, and I think a lot of emphasis was put on the way you looked as a woman. Mm, exactly. Um, for me, I'm really worried about it because as a teenager, I'd really struggled with eating disorders. Right, and yeah. Oh, really? I never knew that. Mm, oh, really, wow. I mean, really, we really had had a difficult time with it. And so I knew that going on camera, A, I'd have to look at myself and I didn't, you know, I don't have many pictures of myself from my time uh, when right. I was ill. Right. So I just didn't want to look at myself, didn't mm. look in mirrors. It was wow. horrible, very unhealthy. Can yeah. I ask what, 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 what was it that you were eating? Control. I think I was being really, I mean, I was chubby in as much as my body was going through all of the changes mm-hmm. that, you know, teenage bodies do. Some people carry a little extra weight and <clears> I was one of those. If mm-hmm. I'd have just let it be, yeah, it yeah. would have been fine. Yeah. But I was being, I was being really bullied. And I think for me... It was a way of control, uh, controlling a life that felt out of control. When I say being bullied, I was getting death threats and the police were involved. Oh, shit. Wow. Wow. With girls at school. And it was, and the school, Fucking you know, hell. I mean, 
we live in a different time now. Yeah. We we thought it was normal in my house to have a whistle next to the phone, so that when they phoned, normally on a Sunday night, just before you go back to school, we just blow the whistle down the phone to them. Absolutely. And I remember all of their names. Wow. To this day, and I will never forgive them, so even though they were, want, in, they were children. Well, I tell you what, you do say you want to name and names? We'll just call them wankers. Do you know what? Some of them I've had. <laughs> there, was, there was one of the one of one of them. I I saw her um, <gasps> not long after I'd started <gasps> on Pop Idol. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> so this is like going back twenty years. And I do you know how I recognised her? I recognised her from her ankles, and I spent a lot of time looking at her ankles because she'd often knock me to the floor. You're joking! Really? Really? That's awesome. But she did have that. Oh. She was deaf in one ear from getting whistled down the phone at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, go on. No, I, I saw her, and I and I pulled in. I, I was oh. driving past, and I pulled in. Good for you. And I said her name. She went, yeah. And I said, she went, oh my God, you're doing so well. It's so nice to see oh, you. Yeah, and I thought, wants to know you do then, you know what's it? interesting though? She has no recollection of the mm. heart, like the stain that she's left on yeah. my yeah. childhood, actually. Her and her, her, her mates and the way that they carried themselves. Mm. Because it was learned behaviour. And, you know, they weren't, they weren't taught different. So as much as well, I she was the ringleader, so they all just followed suit. I suppose. Yeah, she was the bruiser. You know, she's the one that throw the punches. And this was every week. How did she look? Did she look healthy? No. Good. Good. Excellent. She good, like good. 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 I have to remember, she was a kid. She was pushing a buggy with two kids in when I saw her. So of course she, she was. Know, she was. Um, I didn't want to. I certainly didn't Not want to pick, to pick a, pick a conversation like that up in front of children. But um, you just have to forgive people sometimes for um, ignorance, and I mm. think that. Yeah. She was just acting out, and if you know, I was just the easy target. Also, you know, I might write it off as me being a bit chubby and a bit of an easy target. I was a gobshite, mm. you know. I have always had a mouth on me, yeah, and but... as much as I never hit back with my fists, I always hit back with my words. Um, yeah, I know. But so you know, you, 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 yeah, you've got you've got room in the world, especially as a kid, to kind of you figuring out your personality. You've got a right to be a gobshite without people fucking yeah. being absolutely vile. To vile, you. yeah, and bullying, and I mean, their behaviour was awful. So that is what informed that. I think, I think, and then when I was given the opportunity to go on telly, I had to ask myself some really hard questions. Like, can mm -hmm. you do this? It's going to make you ill again. Through a lens, you know, because what I mean? I'd only got better really when I was seventeen. So we're mm -hmm. talking about a handful of years on. Am yeah. I all right with this? Mm. What was your eating disorders? Anorexia, or was it bulimia? And bulimia, both. Both? Yeah. Bloody hell. Um, do you know what, to this day, really infuriates me? Is that, you know, back in those times, you know, I was a size eight if I was a push. You know, mm. I was tiny in as much as I used to, for TV shows, I would wear model sizes, yeah. sample wow. sizes, like we'd borrow clothes. Mm -hmm. I was constantly described as curvy. By whom? The, me the media. Oh, wow. What? That is not curvy. I'm curvy now, and I wow. love my curves. Wow. I, well, most days, but then it was—it was very unhealthy. Wow. So I think a lot of my decisions about do I want to be famous was more to do with my Course. mental health. I don't know how different. And we it didn't is call now. it mental health yeah. then. Yeah. No, and we no didn't talk, talk about, about it. it. No, no of course. Um, I don't know how different it is now, but I do think that I think being being a famous woman in the nineties and noughties came was a real poison chalice. Came with a lot. I don't know how different it is now because I've because. I've moved on like yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got older and like it's not something I particularly well, I think social media is, a, is you know we didn't have that to contend with but equally like I think as well in some ways for all of the keyboard coward warriors out mm. there you know people are held accountable now for the things that they share and say yeah. because there's a footprint a digital footprint True. you know I can never prove what that girl did to me mm. because, unless you know yeah. because I've got no evidence of yeah, it yeah. you can't replay Jane Middlemas's clip from that no. clip even well, though it it's embedded fault, in your yeah, no of course you know and you're quite right difficult though isn't it though because it goes both ways it because does. because on the one hand there's accountability and like you know if someone's a dick to me on Twitter I know I've 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 got the right skill i've got the right language to be able to sardonically make that like point it out and i know that if if i if i wanted to i could kind of set people on that to in my defense i actually try not to because sometimes it's like really do you want to just set the dogs on them like yeah. the, you, you're like well if they're going to be a dick they're a dick i don't need to set my my bit, army on it's them. a bit david and goliath because we do pack a media exactly punch, yeah we do know. now which we didn't used to you used, yeah. used to have no voice at all if someone said shit about you, you had no voice well, you had no, you had right, no of right of reply exactly yeah. but that said um you know, it's still, it's still uh, the the double edged sword of it is as much as you can reply, you've still got. It's overwhelming if people are going to troll you and they're going to give you shit and they're going to make you feel bad about yourself. It can be absolutely overwhelming, it can be. as we know. Um, you know, 
from from mental health problems and suicides and loss of lives yeah, yeah. loss of actual and it, life and i think we're in the middle of um a seismic shift in mm. the way we in the language we use the mm -hmm. way the way we regulate what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior we've got to regulate social media the internet is going to have to be policed in some way yeah. that is that is a given yeah, accountability accountability, we accountability yeah. because we can't go on telly and not expect to be chastised by Ofcom yeah. if we break what are considered to be yeah. codes of conduct, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, The realms of respectable, like for example, what you behavior. couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't just go. There's nowhere in in the country where you could just go and accuse someone of not prosecuting Jimmy Savile and expect to get away with it. Oh no, wait, there is somewhere that you can do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite. Yeah, but the times are a changing, right? Well, they better add do, yeah. Because and even you with podcasting be now, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, the podcast platform I use, Acast, they have a code of working mm -hmm. practices yeah. that because podcasting, well, yeah. yeah, podcasting is is effectively it's the wild west there is nothing to regulate yeah. it yet yeah. but it will become regulated because there's money there but yeah. that's not why you should regulate it you should regulate it because it's the right thing to it, do correct yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. It just says to me how brave you were just to, to step into the world right into the spotlight when you had mental issues with weight and and how you looked and knowing as i said that people use words and throw things out there and pictures that are not forgiving. You know, people you can come out somewhere, someone takes a picture of you not looking your best, and then you're spread across. Yeah, and there's, I mean, that, there's all of that. There's yeah. All you, of did that. you have to manage can, that and that manage yourself around that? Did yeah, you never think? Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what? I cannot be a part of this. You know what, it, it could come back. You, yeah, you'd have to. Um, well, you'd, I think we all find our own ways of dealing with stuff and coping. Yeah. But I would. What I've come to understand now is, what I, I, I had a sort of almost a fixed script of like, well, you know, well. Of things that you'd say in those scenarios mm -hmm. like well you know i've got a thick skin now haven't i i'm mm -hmm. gonna have to grow a thick skin mm -hmm. no you don't have to grow a thick no, skin that's not acceptable yeah, so exactly. for a long time i put up with it until i think like everybody you just get to that point where you go no i'm not curvy no you can't yeah. describe me like that yeah, fuck there was off, one yeah. there was one incident with um in telly when i was working on a show where i was pulled to one side and uh, told that they would like me to go and maybe go to uh, a boot camp to lose weight but don't worry we'll pay for it who said that oh. um and wow I that just, was that was a tv channel or show tv show it, it was a, it was a television person Fuck let's just leave me. it there and wow. i said to this person if i was an alcoholic would you encourage me to have a drink because mm. I'm not fun be on camera? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. Because that's, that's the same. I said, so, do you know what? I'm going to tell you two things now. I'm going to tell you, first of all, I'm going to tell you why you can't say that because I've had a history mm -hmm. of eating disorders. But you do know that because mm -hmm. oh, wow. you, you are alive to that. So I'm just going to try to do the education piece of why this is not acceptable. And secondly, go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you... Th th I mean, it's not nearly as... Funnily as, enough, about ten years later, I, I was in um, to her house and this, this person wandered past <gasps> and goes, Hi, it's me. Did you not recognise me? Yes. And I said, yeah, I ignored you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, yeah, Go on, look. And I just, I just watched this person yeah. sort of wilt on his own vine. Good, good. And I thought, mate, you did that to me on the most spectacular yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. So just just taste some of the Kool-Aid you forced yeah, down my yeah, throat yeah. because it's not yeah. nice. This is, this is, it's vaguely in the same territory, but it's not nearly anything as kind of serious as what you're talking about. But it's just an interesting observation about the press that until you've experienced it, you just don't know. So, um, Throughout my entire career, because the first job I did that, that people knew me for was like skinny, scrawny, pale Anthony from the royal yeah. family, right? And then, <laughs> um, and uh, then just the word, just attributing the word skinny and scrawny to somebody that would not happen, right? No, well, you, exactly. It wouldn't be written. It well, wouldn't be reported. Exactly. Like and it's that. like yeah. uh, lanky, skinny, there was mm -hmm. everything. And then, um, and then kind of Johnny and Two Pints was like, I guess, again, sort of gawky and lanky and whatever. Anyway, I've, I could show you a photo, but I can't be bothered getting it. I'll just describe it to you for people listening anyway. Every single article that was ever written about me, even like if it was a, a, a fun article, I don't mean like profile pieces. Profile pieces, you do a photo shoot and this and that and the other. But every single article where I was involved in it in some way, it was spotted so-and-so doing this or, you know, they'd, they'd use a photo 
where where I'd be like mid blink or like scratching my eye or I'd be walking out and I'm like, oh, what? Like looking over and I just, to the point where I was literally like, I am the most unphotogenic, hideous, ph ph and I was like, I can't be like the most hideously ugly lad because I'm I'm bagging I'm bagging women that are way out of my league. So like, <laughs> like the telly, uh, yeah. Well, I oh know some <laughs> of these women were also on the TV telly. So, so, so <laughs> some of these women were doing all right in their own way. So that so that it couldn't have been that. I was like, I've got to have something, right? No, no, but it's it's true. But you're like, I just I'm so horribly unphotogenic to the point where like it didn't make me miserable. You just go, ah, oh, well, it is what it is, right? Then about. Probably only about five, six years ago, about five years ago, I got in this weird Twitter fight with the then uh, Secretary of Health, Jeremy Hunt. Did you? Yeah, I, ca I called him out on Twitter for lying on, um, on the, one of the politics shows. And he, like, in, like naively replied. I said, but I took the clip and I went, this is what it looks like when you go on TV and lie to the British public. And he came back and went, well, I didn't actually. And I was like, oh, that's it. He came back and he said, um, if you can prove that I lied, in that interview, then do so. Otherwise, shut up. I was like, oh, you fucked with the wrong, the wrong guy. So I then put together like a 40 tweet thread of like, first of all, you said this. Here's the evidence from this, from this survey. This is this. Did 40 tweets, right? And basically just eviscerated him. And it was great fun. And all the papers picked but it up. But did you back it up with fact in chronological order? In chronological, everything, everything he said, I was like, well, then, you said this, the he facts say this. the response. Yeah, and he, and he, and it, it, it eviscerated him. Anyway, the point being that every paper picked it up. But what was really interesting, you expect the Guardian to be up, you expect it up. But all the right wing, even the most right wing papers were like, yeah, he's been absolutely destroyed here, which was great because like they're all kind of on his side, right. but they were still a bit like, yeah, this, this is great. But what's really, really interesting to me looking back now is, um, Every single photo that accompanied that article, Jeremy Hunt, there's a picture of him rubbing his eye, blinking, looking surprised. And every picture of me is a red carpet picture where I'm just smiling. Poised and together. Poised and, lo yeah. and looking, if I may say so, pretty decent. And I'm like, they fucking did that shit on purpose. Yeah. It wasn't that like, oh my God, I'm just horribly it's unphotogenic. Really it's like every single time. But it's building but, a narrative. Yeah, they it? built a narrative. And, and, and um, he and I have both, I don't know if you have, but he and I have both, I think we can say this, we've both um, uh, had court cases against, uh, against some of the papers for phone hacking. Yes, me um, too. Right, there yeah. we go. So we're all in the same boat. So you'll know that some of the things you had to do. And what, they, what the, the lawyer said to me was that they created a narrative Based, based very loosely on what they thought they could cast you as hero, villain, whatever. And then no matter what you did, that was how they, they presented you. So I was presented for years as this sort of slightly lightweight party boy, slight, oh, he's doing well. Look at the women he's managed bit to talk. Oh, bit, oh, he's smashed, bit got, oh, look at him. He's drunk again. And I was just like blinking or something. Yeah. And then as soon as it was time for me to be like, hmm, he seems to have been quite heroic and took that. Suddenly every picture of me is like all poised and lovely. Yeah. And you just go... Fuck you. This is my life that you're dicking exactly. around with. Exactly. This is my is, actual career. Yeah. And I think in some ways social media gives us an opportunity to create, to create our own a, narrative. And yeah. Our own narrative and be a, a pipeline that gives you a chance to respond. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're articulate, intelligent enough to be mm. able to hold your own end in the argument. But you're, you're absolutely right. And I think that that is systemic. Mm. And I think especially for women oh, yeah. in the worse. media. Way worse. Way yeah. worse. I mean, like, you know, I was part of the, the brigade of ladettes in the 90s. Mm. Mm. And, you know, apparently we were quite outrageous because guess what? We were doing all the things that men did. Mm. We went to bars. We stayed out late. But I'll tell you what else we did. We turned up for work. Mm. We turned it in. Yeah. We never dropped a ball. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and, and so, yeah, all we were doing is what, the guys yeah, exactly, were doing exactly, exactly. like it's parity like come on guys you did say so vagina boring. earlier though which really vagina shocked us both. The vagina. Oh, no 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 come hey, on no, come, come on, on come on oh we can't cope with that we've um, <laughs> it's it's uh as i say it's well I, this if we're getting towards the end of uh of the chat but I, I wanted to always i've always wanted to ask you about the x factor because uh -huh. it was huge and it must have been a moment of you know, it's a massive peak, is it? The X Factor, you know, primetime television. You, you've spoke about it before, but I've, I don't know if our listeners have heard. You, was it 2003? Was it, 2000, was it, it was, so, right, you, you got, you got, you presented The X Factor, right? I did, yeah, yeah. But before that, and I'm making a show about it at the moment. In oh. fact, as soon as I leave here, I've oh. got to go back and finish the scripts for a record tomorrow. But actually, the show that preceded it was Pop Idol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. And yes. that's where I started my talent yes. show. Pop Idol, yes, of course. Um, 
yeah, my talent show kind of foray, I suppose. And that's where, so when, so Pop Idol, and listen, you know, it's really well documented what happened with the X Factor. Uh, I've also established that I'm not somebody that quietly um, doesn't say much back. Let's and just, I don't know if that, let, that maybe have in, is informed what happened Let's quickly next. recap. Yeah. Basically, they treated you really disrespectfully when they let you go. Fair? I believe so, yeah. And just to provide some context, so when I joined Pop Idol, um, uh, I was the girl that was brought in to uh, host the ITV2 spin-off show, the first ever spin-off show on ITV2. And I was brought in because I had an existing, obviously I knew pop music because mm -hmm. I'd been the editor of yeah. Smash Hits like a minute before. Um, and But I also had a working relationship with Simon Fuller who managed the Spice Girls right, and right, right. went on to create the Idol format with Simon Cowell who yeah. I'd also worked with during my time at Smash Hits. Yeah. Um, so actually working together, my first time of working with Simon on camera though, amongst all of that, was prior to e either of those shows I had launched a boy band talent search uh, for this morning where I was working as a an entertainment on-screen reporter with Claudia Winkleman. And do you remember Mark Wogan, Terry Sun? Yeah. yeah. So, and I said, pop stars arrivals or pop stars, one of the two was huge. And I said, we should do like a this morning boy band search. And I brought Simon Cowell in, who was then unknown A&R Mark Gunn. He turned down pop stars and was kicking himself mm. um, because it had been such a success. Uh, so I brought him, I brought him in onto the panel as a judge, and we cast this boy band. And in our boy band that went nowhere, by the way, was Anthony Costa and Lee Ryan, who met at the audition. Wow! Two of Lisa from Steps's brothers, the Scott Lees, and the Scott Lees, and the fifth member was Will Young, who went on wow. to win Pop wow. Idol. How funny is that? Wow. Wow. So I had this kind of, you know, not Darius. Remember that? Okay. Darius, he, Darius was great. He turned up everywhere like a I'm bad sorry, penny, didn't I'm he? Sorry. I love like Darius. So Darius came tits. back and rehabilitated himself on Pop Idol. Uh, yeah, I, remember I don't after, know if he ever rehabilitated. After he made, come back from that. After he made a chunk oh of himself God. on Pop Idol. Oh my God! I'm just gonna I listen before you. I'm just gonna sing you this. Oh my God! If anyone could, I do another one. It, no, hit me, baby, one more time by but Darius. Don't forget how young he was. But he was going. Sorry, everyone, don't cry for me. It's just, it was so, God, I got right on my tits. I, was, I think I broke my telly. I was <laughs> fucking fuming. Who do you think you are? No, it's okay, don't cry for me. You're like the Messiah. Oh, he got on my nerves. Did I he, love um, Darius. Did sorry. he have a single career? I'm just, yes, he did. He did. did Better he? than mine, the bastard. <laughs> That's what I was about to ask. Uh, <laughs> did he do one on easier as well? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, my wife had to dance, with, had, to, had to be on stage with him, and Darius had to kiss her on the cheek, and I never went to see it because I couldn't watch it. <laughs> She went, you never came to see me because oh Darius God. had to kiss me on the cheek. Get a life. She, she did the pop, know, pop, pop it, idol tour. I know. Go. I was so obsessed let with how much I disliked this fucker. Let it go. Oh, I don't think practice. that's normal. Did he have to grab the health? Did he have to grab the health? I met him. He was lovely. Totally know, nice yeah, guy. To be fair. Apart from he walked into a club once. He's utterly charming. To be we fair, fair like I've met him a couple of times. He was absolutely delightful. I was like, why were you such a knobhead on pop stars? Because he's a young kid and he was caught on camera. We've all been young kids though. So anyway, so I suppose so. So then I started working with on Pop Idol and I was given the job on X Factor as the host because there wasn't going to be another Pop Idol because there was conflict between Simons uh, over Christ knows what. Money. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, almost yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I can't do that. Anyway. Um, and, you know, I was given the job because I was told that I was feisty and I could stand up to the judges and hold my own and we, X Factor was going to be different. I was so excited that Sharon Osbourne was going to be on the show. Yeah. Which, I mean, she was you know, a game changer for me in terms of like the she excitement levels of well. work with like people tuning in. You know, the Osbournes had been massive. We knew she was a kick-ass yeah. manager and now we were going to see her at work, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, there was all of that. Um, but obviously I'd always known Simon from way back before either of us were famous. He was the A&R guy that would pitch me his acts at Smash Hits. Mm. So we had, um, we'd known each other. We had history. So I always spoke to him as I'd always spoken to him, which was honestly and forthrightly, mm -hmm. and if that's even a word. And, um, yeah. And so they basically, to um, recap the story, right? You said to the, you said, listen, if if I'm if if you if you think it of like, well, then me go. I started to read stories that I was yeah, hearing, right? That's that, right? That I was being pushed. How long um, had you been there at the X Factor? A couple of years. Wow. And um, so I went into his dressing room and said, listen, if you if you want me gone. Just, just let me know. Just, just let me know, right? And I'll, I'll quit. But don't do this. Like, just don't do it like this. Do not make me cannon Do you think fodder. stories were being leaked? Oh, we knew they were. Right. Yeah. 
Um, Why? Just to create spin? Yeah. Buzz? Because that was the 90s did he deny way. It? Did he deny they, it? the noughties way. Did he deny he it? He totally denied it and said, this is, a, well, you know, as long as. So what happened then was he was like, don't be ridiculous. You know what it's like. And, you know, we were in the papers constantly, that, mm, the show, mm-hmm, when I say mm-hmm. we. Um, so it was a lot of noise. And also, it wasn't online. So if you didn't physically have a copy in your hand, you didn't see it. And I chose not to. Mm. It was just too much. Yeah. So yeah. I just ignored it as best I could until you can't. Right. Um, and then we won. An, uh, we had a night at the NTAs where we won a lot. And we got taken backstage into the press room. And, the, and it came up. And somebody asked, are you going to fire Kay? So I just stood there and I went, are you? <laughs> yeah. And he said, absolutely not. For as long as I'm on the show, she's, she's, she's got a job here. Right. So that was November. Wow. A couple of months later, I can't remember what month it was. Call, I mean, so I thought that was a bit shit. Yeah, that's shit. And I don't think that's how you treat people Agreed. with respect that you've you've had. I mean, just people full stop, actually. It's just, it was unnecessary. Mm. And I did feel like cannon fodder. Mm. And it did set the narrative. So as much as you feel like you've been portrayed as scrawny, skinny, slightly, mm. mm-hmm. you know, pissed up. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the way you've been portrayed, that really has been something that I talk about in every interview. Mm. And... What I'm determined to do at this stage in my life, you know, I'm 49 by the time this goes out, is I will not allow this to be defined as a failing. That's somebody else's decision. No. It taught me so much. I reinvented myself. I had to. It was humiliating. It was awful. It Mm. was uncomfortable. But it was momentary. Mm. It was also just a job, not the end of the world. Like we said at the start. And I stood up for myself and I spoke up and I... um. Yeah, I'm. I felt. I'm. I feel um, rich in integrity. Yeah, yeah. If not with the bank balance, that I mean, I could have stayed on the X Factor for years, but had you decided to keep me, but in order to to be in favour, I probably would have had to alter my behaviour. Um, in the modern world, because you can just set up a podcast and start talking and be whoever you want to be, and if people like it, they will. If you build it, they will come, and if they don't like it, they, they won't. won't yeah. And actually. Your podcast is a massive. This is, we should sort of finish talking about white wine yeah. question time a little bit because yeah. it's such a massive success. Yeah, it's a great. Success. Um, and you do, you know, going great guns, and it's. I think there's something about. You don't want to be defined as like, well, that's. But it's a story that's interesting about like, well, what happened with that? So, but you're like, I've decided not to be defined by it. But even the success of your podcast is not being defined by it. It's like, I've got important people like to hear what I have to say, and 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 here we are talking about it. My big question is the format of your podcast is. You get someone on, you drink three glasses of wine over asking some questions. Are you not bollocksed by the end of it? No. Because three glasses of white wine would finish me off at my I age. train hard, babe. <laughs> yeah. Well, 52 weeks a year. Yeah. yeah Jesus. No, January and I, my no. Every month Do you is get some free wine? Have you got a sponsor? We've got wine sponsors. We Bobby! Have- oh, bollocks! We've been doing two this years. For years. <laughs> Bloody hell. We've got a beer sponsor. We've been doing this two years now. Oh, we have to buy series. our own beer, Got to bring it. our own beers in. Pissy now. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Well done, you. But you know Should what, we start going is- two pints of wine with one another <laughs> and see if we can get cake? We'll just be asleep by the end Yeah. Yeah, we do. But, but yeah, it's, I, I love doing what I do now. And all of the stuff that happened is kind of, you know, got me to hear. Oh, yeah. Good and bad. Yeah. And actually, the really difficult moments are the ones where you learn and grow. Yeah. And th- that stuff's important. It's important to feel challenged and uncomfortable and mm. not kicked about. So mm. I'm not endorsing what happened to me as okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying I'm okay yeah, as a result. Yeah, of it also really. helped form the person you are today. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what? I still, to this day... I do not back down in the face of powerful opposition. Mm. I don't care. Right. Fuck it. If mm. I think I'm right, I will eloquently state my case. And if that costs me opportunities, then so be it. The stuff that I was um, not prepared to back down on was a hill I was prepared to die on. Mm-hmm. I didn't die like yeah. Jesus. I'm yeah. fucking resurrected. Yeah. Yes, he is. There we but go. But that's got to be a way to wrap this. There you go. Boom. Kate Farton, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. By the way, I don't, I don't, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus again. Okay? <laughs> cool, oh, shit. Yeah, don't upset that one. Yeah, she's moonwalked right out of that one. Well, he said yeah. you're an atheist. Yeah. They're after yeah. you now. You've had it. Shit, I just compared it to Michael Jackson. Oh, God, it's all going on. Oh,